Pedro from ANP Reacts. I'm here today with Gerhard of Ain Har Yar. I have a really hard time pronouncing, so I apologize <laughs> beforehand. Uh, to talk about the new album North Star that comes out February 26 on Napalm Records. How are you doing? I'm doing great. It's great to great. finally be finished with this album. You know, it's been a, a long process. It was supposed to be released in October last year. And then because of this COVID business, everything got delayed and, you know, postponed. So now, and it's finally here. Yeah, finally here. Everybody got lazy. So we <laughs> suddenly we got in a hurry to finish this, you know. So the first question I have for you about this album is, do you feel like this record is the perfect continuation or progression from where the previous record left off? Or is this an album that you feel kind of it stands on its own? Or perhaps maybe a little bit of both? A little bit of both. I think um, since our sort of reunion, you might call it, in 2009 with the Norren, I think we've kind of paved a new way for the band. You know, it's kind of different sounding than everything before that. And I think the progress from Norren until now has been quite natural. Uh, and especially the two last albums, because they were recorded in the same studio uh, at the Frudes studio, the mm -hmm. bassist and vocalist. And so I think they have, you know, somewhat the similar sound. And I think when we make music, it sounds in Hayo anyway, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it, I, it, I think... Uh, it has your DNA in it. it. It does, you know. So I think it's a nice continuation of the at least the previous album uh, how is the creative process behind a record like this like how do you guys tackle uh, or how do you divide the, the the workload amongst all of you uh amongst the two of us yeah. <laughs> it's mainly me and Fuda who writes the music and it's been like that since 1993 so um we basically we have never been a band that jams music out in the rehearsal studio you know we sit at home and grind on it you know and uh, create like a project we present it to the other guys that's like it's been always since the beginning and that happened this time as well we sometimes like one song on the previous album and uh, one song on this album actually uh, stars we actually Put together me and Fuda in the studio on an afternoon, you know, so it happens. But normally we just create music uh, by ourselves and, you know, we present it to the others. So when you come to the studio, you already have the complete picture of how it yeah, is. Somewhat, gonna, yes. gonna uh, somewhat, yes. And uh, there's always room for, uh, you know, uh, to edit stuff and uh, you know, it's not always perfect, but it's it's like a good sketch. You know, yeah. There's always some room for improvement, if you will. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there is. You well, know, it's always good to have. Uh, you know, you have an idea, and it's always good to have fresh eyes and ears to to look at it. And you know, it's it's not yeah, always I, I perfect. When, you know, when you guys are so involved in the process, sometimes it becomes a little bit difficult to see the forest from the trees. So yeah, perhaps exactly. a, a fresh new set of eyes and ears will help read the, maybe not change the songs, but redefine some of the elements within the tracks themselves. Exactly. And it's, it's not, as, as you said, it's not about changing the song. It's like maybe add a little or take away something just to make it flow better, you know? So, uh, yeah, it's like the producer role, you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, do, do you enjoy that time in the studio? Is that a part of the process of creating a record like this that, that you look forward to or you, you just kind of want to get to the finished product? Uh, mostly the last, but uh, <laughs> I kind of, in, I really enjoy the song making process, you know, like the recording stuff I can do without, you know, that's just, you know, it's, it's frustrating. It's always frustrating, you know. But uh, the songwriting process is, uh, and also at least when we, like we, like we did with the song Stars, when we wrote that in a studio in an afternoon from just a couple of ideas, that's really rewarding, you know. That must be fun to see something like that being born 
right in front. I mean, not that other stuff is not born in front of your eyes, but this one seems a little bit more organic. It just kind of happened in the moment. Yeah, and uh, we just had some ideas, quite old ideas actually. And when I when I listen to the ideas now, and I hear how the song became, it's it's like insane, incredible. You know, it's, it doesn't sound the same at all. You know, and the weird thing is that with that song, when we created that in the studio, it's like we go into some kind of flow mode. You know, I can't I can't remember it almost. You know how we got to that part and that part, you know, it's just happened. Oh, and that's really nice when that happens, yeah. Well, what, what is the most challenging aspect for you uh, when it comes to, to create an album like this? Well, it has to be, <laughs> it has to be better than the previous, you know, <laughs> that's always the that's goal. Always the goal. <laughs> it's always the goal and, you know, that's not for us to judge. Uh, we feel that we have made a really solid album, you know, a, a great continuation from the last one. And, you know, so far we've gotten really good reviews or, you know, feedback from it. So, and, you know, we, although we have a deadline, we won't f release anything that we're not happy with. Never, you know, so... Uh, I think that's a good filter, you know. We need to know that, okay, this is a solid album that we can stand for. Mm -hmm. At, at yeah. the end of the day, you have to be happy with the output, otherwise what's the point? Yes, exactly, because mainly we make music for ourselves, you know. We make our own favorite music, so to speak. So, and you know, if people like it, great. It's a bonus. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, it's, it's important uh, that people like it, but you know, we, we have to, uh, stand for it ourselves. Mm -hmm. One of the main things that I noticed about the song on this record, and I felt that there was something that perhaps came a little bit from the previous album into this album, that is the, the raw production sound that the record has. Uh, uh, is, is that something that you guys kind of discovered uh, by luck or now has become more of, of, a, of a driving force of how you want your records to sound like? Well, we want our sound to be, you know, heavy metal, really poundy you know what i mean and i think um and that's also because uh, this album and the previous album was recorded uh at Fruta's place you know and mixed there as well for his own studio and uh you know when you do everything at home you have a lot more time to to adjust and you know experiment with stuff with the sound and uh you know, you're not happy the first month, you know, when you send it away to someone else, it becomes what it becomes, you know. Yeah, you lose you know, a little bit of control of it. Exactly. They mix it and you have limited time. You know, you can't, you know, go back and forth for months, you know. But here we can do that. So uh, I guess that's, we sort of perfected our own sound. In, in that sound, that, that, that raw uh, aspect of the sound, what do you feel that that brings to the experience of the whole album? Because I, don't, I feel like listening to this album, without that rawness, that greediness of the sound, the record is not the same. No, of course not. Uh, I don't know. It's, uh, it's just a pure metal sound. You know, we're inspired by 80s heavy metal, you know. Snare drums, if you can see my arms, like that, <laughs> you know. Big impact drums and a very huge bass, you know. And that's why what we are inspired by, you know, eight is heavy metal classic sound, you know. And, uh, and this, you touched on the drums, and that's the next thing I wanted to ask you because I felt that the drum sound on this album had a lot of volume, but at the same time, it had a lot of depth. It, it was almost like it became the soul of the record. Uh, is yeah. that how you would categorize this, the, the drum sound on this album, as the soul? I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> Since I'm the drummer, you know. <laughs> That's why I'm asking you, like, you feel that strongly about it, because I felt like the drums had a huge uh, presence throughout the whole It is life. a very, it, it has become very important in the sound uh, in the later years. Uh, you know, and uh, maybe that's because, I don't know, me and Food writes the music and we have... <laughs> 
the most to say about it, about the sound. So I don't know. And I, I think even on the last album, it's even more prominent than the previous album, you know, mm-hmm. like bigger drums and yeah. And, and the bass as well, it's not just the drums. Like I, f- I felt like if there's one thing that you guys didn't do is hide the bass. Like you could hear, no, no, no. You you could hear the bass, and 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 I think having the the overall production be that gritty, that raw, it really allows it, it accentuates the bass sound. It allows the bass to come more into the forefront and play more of a predominant role in the yeah, overall sound of the record. I agree. It's like the drums and the bass. It's like the body of the music, you know, or the foundation. Mm-hmm. And. Uh, like uh, old Black Sabbath, you know, dun, 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 you know that kind of bass. Always wanted to do stuff like that, and uh, yeah, I, I, I felt like you guys did that with this album. Like you, you said the foundation, and I feel that about this record. Like the drums and bass are the road, are the pillars of everything else, and and it felt like it allowed the guitars to be a little bit more dynamic. It allowed the yeah. guitars to be a little bit more creative, while while the the bass and drums always stayed very cohesive or always stayed very consistent across every single song. Do, do yeah. you feel like this allows the, the whole record to have uh, more power, more drive and, and gives a better experience overall? Yeah, I think so. I think, uh, you know, we always, I don't know if this is like a illusion killer or whatever it is. <laughs> we always play it like, like um, a metronome, like a click. You know, and um, well, I don't know. It's uh, I think it gets a lot tighter that way. You know, we we create the flow by the tempo changes and stuff like that ourselves instead of letting it happen unnaturally or you know by chance. So um, yeah, I think so. The, the atmosphere that I got from this album predominantly came from the vocals. The vocals, I, I felt like the vocals on this record captured the essence, not just of the sound that you guys created, but also yeah. the lyrics themselves. So it's not like a one size fits all. It's not like what you get in the first song is going to be what you're going to get every single song. And there's <clears throat> changes. I felt like the vocals played a very important role in order to create an atmosphere, in order to create an ambiance. Uh, I... is, is that a, an important element of this record for you? Absolutely. I think it's very diverse vocals on this album, uh, at least compared to, you know, the previous albums. And uh, I don't know, for some reason, and we discovered that afterwards, because Fuda was, you know, walking out in the woods and was listening to this album and the previous album, back to back, and suddenly he said, you know, the vocals on this new album is a lot higher than the previous album. And... Um, that was not intentionally, you know, it just in this, uh, this setting, it fitted, you know, to have the, the more dominant vocals, you know, in this, uh, on these songs. They're almost driving the experience of the record, you, you know, yeah. like they're, they're coming, they're, they have a predominant role, but they're not necessarily in your face, but they're there. Like, it's, it's kind of hard to explain how the vocals come across. Yeah, the, the way we do vocals. We always make the music first, and then we have the text, uh, the vocals done afterwards. You know, we write the text after the song is finished. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the, you know, the most important thing, actually, to me, it's more than the the, the message in the the text, almost, is the wording, you know. It's more like a rhythmic instrument, the text, or the the lyrics, you know. Mm -hmm. It's more like a, a, a different instrument. Oh. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I, I agree with you. It, it kind of gave me the feeling. That's why I said the atmosphere from the vocals, because it kind of gave me the feeling that you, 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 you could feel the essence of the lyrics. You could feel the essence of the atmosphere of the track. And then the yeah. vocals changed ever so slightly in, in order to make it more noticeable to the listener, to, to, to drive the message home, if you will. Yeah. And that's also where uh, inspired by classic heavy metal, where vocals have a huge role, you know. So yeah, they're yeah. not just saying words. No, it's not just saying words, but you know that too. You know, it's like it, it needs to be. 
part of the music, you know. Mm. It doesn't matter what words it is, but it needs to feel like it's part of the music. It, it needs to have its own flow. Exactly. Uh, another thing about this record that I thought was absolutely phenomenal was the consistency, uh, not, not the consistency in terms of being repetitive, but the consistency in terms of the quality of the guitar solos on this album. I mean, you could close your eyes, pick a song, and it, there's it, there's going to be an incredible solo in it. Uh, yeah, I agree. It's, how, it's, 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 it's just absolutely outstanding. As I was listening to it, I was like, okay, this is my favorite solo. Then I would listen to the next song. You know what? This is my favorite solo. Then I would listen to the next song. I was like, you know what? Those two are really good, but now this one is my favorite. And it was like that all the way through. Uh, yeah. How do you see the role of the solos within the songs themselves? Big. I mean, uh, now this guy's probably going to get high on himself, but uh, I think it's like we struck gold with this guy, you know? He's extremely talented, and he's actually living down in, downstairs in my house, so maybe he can hear me right now. Uh, but uh, he has grown extremely the last years, you know? Um, he started uh, doing solos on the Dragons of the North uh, remake, Mm -hmm. the XX and obviously uh, that album needed to be guided a little bit you know because we don't want to make completely new solos to an uh, existing album and uh, we also need to I don't know guide him a little bit on the previous albums but uh, on this album he sort of yeah now, now suddenly we're on the same wavelength you know and uh, we got surprised ourselves each time we got a new solo, you know. It's uh, yeah. awesome. I, I was blown away. Like, I mean, yeah. it's not just the beauty of the solo. Because to me, the solo, uh, in the, on this record, the solos have a lot of beauty. But it's yeah. also the, the dynamic that they offer to the tracks. It's almost like he understood exactly how this song feels from an emotional perspective. And then I'm going to put a solo there that's going to enhance that atmosphere, that feeling that the track had up until that point. And that's yeah. not an easy thing to do. It is not. But uh, he's, I hear him downstairs every day on the guitar. So <laughs> <laughs> that's what so, he do. You know. So you weren't, you weren't surprised? Not, um, cheers, by the way. No, I wasn't surprised at all. That's good. That's good. Uh, uh, one thing I want to ask you is that sometimes people use certain words to define records and, and they get taken out of context. So the, one of the things that I felt about this album, it, it was that it was, it was a simple record for me to appreciate, to digest. I didn't feel like I really had to work all the way through it in order to understand what your guys were trying to do. So my no. question for you is this, is this a simple record that was complex to make or there is complexity in the record? It just comes across in a simple way. <laughs> well, uh, that was difficult. Uh... Well, I, I think it's at least the first. It's a quite simple record that is complex to make, you know, because it's not easy to make. Uh, uh, how was that? No, <laughs> it's not easy to make uh, like simplistic songs that are effective, you know, that are great, you know. But uh, sometimes less is more, I think. And that's why I want to, you know, I feel like we use big pounding drums and, uh, you know, the enhanced bass and stuff like that, you know. In order to make the, the, the volume big. To make it big, yes. Yeah. Well, one like last Man question War for, big. Yeah, well, one last question for you about this record. Considering everything that's happening with the pandemic, uh, it's yeah. not like you guys can <clears throat> release the album, then go on tour and kind of see for yourselves the success of the record by being on tour and, 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 and seeing the fans' reaction. So in a time like this, how do you measure the success of this album? Time will show. I don't know. Right now, we, um, you know, all we had in 2020, uh, it's like we had a lot of stuff lined up, you know, like a tour in Europe, a tour in Norway, and a lot of festivals that were just postponed until 2021. And I don't think that will happen either, you know. Uh, so uh, I don't know. It falls a bit dead, you know. 
it's it's a it's a tough it's time. It's difficult to say. It's a tough time to be a musician. Luckily, yeah. we have jobs, so you know this is not what we rely on totally. You know. Yeah, it's a tough but, time uh, for a musician. Uh, I I think at a time like this, the fact that you guys are still releasing. I mean, I'm sure you are dying to release this record. It's not like you wanted to hold it for another year. But I uh, know not now. Yeah, <laughs> then we will be tired of it. <laughs> but for us, for the fans, I, I think it's it's really welcomed. We we need a distraction and we need music, and music offers that distraction. It allows us to kind of leave the realm that we're in and travel into a much different realm. And and yes. and this album does that. Yeah, exactly. And uh, this is the only thing we can do right now. You know, three albums, and we have, uh, as you might have known, we have released two videos by now. And we have one coming up soon as well, one, a new one after the album, just after the album. So, uh, and we actually have uh, one gig, hopefully, in, in our hometown, you know, a release gig on the 26th of February. Uh, I don't know are, if it will happen, but... Uh, any like live streams or anything like that or? Uh, no. That's kind of that. We decided uh, that's not for us. We we're not completely reliant on on it, you know. We all have jobs, you know. We don't need the money, you know. So we could do it, but uh, we just want to wait until it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. You with know, you. yeah. I agree with you. I'm, I, I I mean, it's something this. about standing in a room, uh, playing in front of a camera. It's not the same, you know. When you play a gig, you know you give and take, and if you don't take, you know you don't get any feedback at all. You know it's. It's not the same. There, there's an uh, immediate reward. Exactly when you play live, yes. Yeah, it is. Yeah, for for not just for you guys, but for the fans as well. There's a, it, it's a there, there's a, a connection uh, between fans and band that can only happen in a live setting. You you cannot yeah. duplicate it in any other format. No, then you can just watch something on YouTube. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, exactly. It's the same you just thing. watch a music video. Yeah. And right. uh, you know, I don't care if I, if I watch a YouTube video of Judas Priest from Memphis in '83 or a live stream, you know, you know, it's the same thing to me. Yeah, at the end of yeah. the day, you are not there for either, so it doesn't really no. matter. No, <laughs> I wish I was there for a Judas <laughs> yeah. Priest, but still. <laughs> Same with me, same with me. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you very much for your time today. I really appreciate it. The album thank North you. Star comes out February 26 on Napalm Records. Great record. Uh, I, I had a, a real fun time listening to it, and I had a real fun time talking to you about it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you a lot. Take care. All the best. You too. You too.